Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, yeah, I uh, I thought spoiler season was uh, done, you, you know, at least for, you know, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and that we wouldn't be, well, having any more quick takes anytime in the near future, and I'd get somewhat of a break, but, um, we're back at it. Because it appears that the Street Fighter secret lair has, well, been spoiled probably a bit earlier than Wizards intended. And now we've got some new exciting potential commanders to talk about, including Chun-Li. So let's jump into the image that spoiled it all and talk about Chun-Li countless kicks and what kind of a deck you might want to build around her. But actually, before we do that, really quick, a big thank you to Eddie, of course, for all your help during spoiler season and even on these spoilers as well. And of course, if I make any mistakes in this episode, it is always Eddie's fault. It is never my fault. Remember that, okay? So hashtag blame Eddie. Now with that said, let's jump into it. So this week, some content creators have been showing off some of the arts that Wizards has shared with them on some of these secret layer cards for the Street Fighter secret layer. But um, then this image showed up, which shows off uh, what appears to be every single card from the secret layer and what they actually do. So not just the art, but also, you know, the text on the card, which has not been revealed up until this point. And yeah, this image just basically shows off everything. Now, I believe that this image was originally on Twitter, and it has, I believe, been taken down since then. But, uh, of course, this is the internet, and, uh, yeah, once a picture is out there, it is out there, and, uh, yeah, it is, uh, there's no putting it back in the box. That's not a phrase, is it? Pandora's box has been opened? I don't know, it's early. Anyways, now, in regards to legitimacy, these do seem incredibly legitimate, especially since I believe this image essentially came out before official art was spoiled for one or two of these cards, so, yeah, basically... I think there is a 99.99999% chance that these are the actual cards. Now, I do want to say, much like the Stranger Things Secret Lair, there are going to be magic versions of these cards that are going to be coming out in set boosters, I believe, and please correct me below in the comments if I'm wrong on that. There are a lot of products coming out, and uh, yeah, it's hard to keep everything in line. Regardless, again, although these are mechanically neat cards, you can eventually get magic versions of them and versions that are actually in boosters and not just from a secret layer. So you don't have to actually buy the secret layer to play with these cards. You can wait for the magic versions to come out, or if you don't want to wait for either, you know you might decide to just proxy them so you can play with them right away. Regardless, all that aside, back into these cards specifically, yeah, there's a lot to take in here. I mean, it looks like we've got, what, eight new legendary creatures to talk about? Now, I want to make sure I give each commander that I'm covering enough time to actually kind of break the commander down and what it does and what cards work with it. And instead of just making, you know, an extremely long, like, 80-minute episode where I try to cover all the commanders and the cards that work with them, I I'm going to try to focus as much as I can. So, I've already had my first cup of coffee, I've gotten myself ready for what is yet another kind of mini-spoiler season, and let's go into one of the cards that really stood out to me at first with Chun-Li. And of course, since the image that you saw in the previous version is really, really, really tiny, um, I made a custom version, so again, a big thank you to MTG.Design for being an amazing site. So, Chun-Li Countless Kicks is a 3-3 human soldier that costs 1 white blue. She has multi-kicker for Azorius, which basically means that when you cast this spell, you can pay an additional Azorius any number of times as you cast this spell. When Chun-Li enters the battlefield, you exile up to X target instant cards from your graveyard where X is the number of times Chun-Li was kicked, put a kick counter on each of them. She also has Lightning Kick. When Chun-Li attacks, copy each exiled card you own with a kick counter on it, you may cast the copies. 
So first up, incredibly flavorful that Chun-Li has multi-kicker, and yeah, I believe that was something that was revealed along with the art a long time ago when they announced that there was going to be this secret layer crossover with Street Fighter. Regardless, yeah, this seems like quite the powerful commander. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind with this commander, how it works, and definitely some things that are easy to miss on the first read-through, and yeah, things that I definitely might have missed on the first read-through, and Eddie may or may not have, you know, helped make sure that I didn't mess anything up, or maybe Eddie did mess everything up. Anyways, one thing to definitely keep in mind and to remember about this card is that it says exile up to X target instant cards from your graveyard, not instant and or sorceries, just instants. Now that is a massive difference, and yeah, I mean, obviously, if you just had, you know, Chun-Li with kind of any extra turn spell, you'd be like, hey, okay, I win. Luckily, basically every extra turn spell is a sorcery, so yeah, we'll, we'll get to that here in a bit. Anyways, each of those cards are exile with a kick counter on them, and yeah, they're gonna be staying there in exile with kick counters on them in perpetuity. So even if Chun-Li is dealt with, if you get Chun-Li back out, of course, and then multi-kick again, and then get more things with kick counters on them, you not only have access to any new kick counter cards, but also all the ones that you already had access to. So you basically just keep gaining more and more cards with kick counters on them throughout the game. The other big thing to keep in mind with this card is it does say you may cast the copies. It does not say you may cast the copies without paying their cost. So you do have to pay to actually cast those copies. You don't get to cast them for free, and so it's kind of more so like Garth in that way, where it's like, hey, you get this copy of a card for free, but you gotta pay for it to actually cast it. You don't just get it for free, you know, unless it's Black Lotus with Garth. Anyways, that's beside the point. And also, with my discussion with Eddie, it was also found out that you're not gonna be able to get any extra benefits with something like a Twinning Staff, so keep that in mind too. Regardless, all those details and intricacies aside, yeah, this is a really cool card. A commander that builds up kind of this like storage of spells that you keep getting access to when you attack with the commander. And, and yeah, again, this is pretty specific on what kind of cards they can be with them being instants. But still, you can do a lot of cool and exciting things with this. And I am happy they kept this to just instants because again, if it was sorceries, well, it would just be a no-brainer build. Hey, okay, extra turns, I win. That being said, yeah, even though you do have to actually pay for the copies that you are casting, and again, it's just instants, there are still some really powerful things that you can do with this commander. So yeah, let's jump into some cards that you might want to consider for a build around Chun-Li Countless Kicks. So first up, obviously, Chun-Li revolves around an attack trigger, so you're going to be putting her in danger when you're actually swinging out to, you know, be able to cast your copied spells. But of course, there are plenty of ways in Azorius to protect Chun-Li during combat, and especially you can utilize some instants that, you know, you can actually cast with Chun-Li too, over and over again with things like Sheltering Light, Leap, and Shadow Rift. So in a way, you can kind of make this into a feather-ish build and utilize low-to-the-ground spells that can provide additional value, over and over again. Sheltering Light is an instant for a white that says target creature gains indestructible until end of turn, scry 1. So obviously, if you make Chun-Li indestructible, it can be really hard to take her out during combat, and yeah, scry 1 is just a nice additional benefit, not card advantage, but it is card selection. But when it comes to straight up card advantage, how about Leap, which gives target creature flying until end of turn, and you draw a card. So yeah, I mean, flying is probably going to help get Chun-Li through on at least one opponent, so swing at that opponent, give Chun-Li flying, draw your card, and yeah, just for one mana, a repeatable cantrip like this can be fantastic. And one card that is basically guaranteed to essentially always get Chun-Li through is Shadow Rift. It's an instant for a blue that says target creature gains shadow until end of turn, draw a card. Shadow is a very old mechanic that says this creature can only blocked or be blocked by creatures with shadow, so yeah, unless your opponents have a shadow creature, which chances are incredibly unlikely, you're getting Chun-Li through. Regardless, again, yeah, you can definitely get a lot of value in a feather-style way with these low-to-the-ground cantrips and other kind of card advantage spells that you can just cast over and over again, you know, when you attack with Chun-Li. Now, of course, in this kind of a build, you probably also want to consider a card like Swiftfoot Boots, which does double duty in this kind of a deck. It's going to give Equip Creature Hexproof and Haste, so first of all, it protects Chun-Li, you know, from your opponents actually targeting her, and on top of that, it obviously, because it's Hexproof and not Shroud, it still allows you to actually target Chun-Li, which is very important, you know, with a lot of spells with this kind of a build. On top of that, giving Chun-Li Haste can be a fantastic way to allow you to swing right away with her when she gets into play, so that you can get access to those spells that are kicked again, or, sorry, not kicked, spells that have kick counters on them. There we go. Things are getting complex. And of course, throughout the game, if you get more and more instants in your graveyard and you want to get access to them, you know, by exiling them and getting kick counters on them, you want to get Chun-Li back to your hand and then back out or, you know, casting again so you can multi-kick again to get more spells with kick counters on them. 
So you're definitely going to want to consider some unsummon cards like, you know, unsummon, which is an instant for a blue that says return target creature to its owner's hand. Obviously, this can help you out in multiple ways, you know, obviously bouncing Chun-Li to get her back to your own hand so that you can take advantage of that multi-kicker, or, you know, obviously being able to bounce an opponent's creature, you know, again and again and again and again. Now, of course, a fantastic include in this deck is Snap, which is an instant for one in a blue, so one more than Unsummon, and it says return target creature to its owner's hand, but uh, you also get to untap up to two lands. So it's kind of like a free version of Unsummon, and yeah, again, just being able to essentially cast this for free to either bounce back Chun-Li or to bounce an opponent's creature every single time you attack with Chun-Li when this has a kick counter on it, yeah, this can be fantastic especially in combination with lands that actually tap for more than one mana, like, you know, Azorius Chancery or Guildless Commons. Each of these are bounce lands that enter the battlefield tapped, make you return a land back to your hand, but when they're in play, they can tap for two mana, with Azorius Chancery tapping for white-blue and Guildless Commons tapping for colorless colorless. So in combination with a card like Snap, you can actually net mana by just casting your card, and yeah, there are a lot of synergies here that you can really play with with a commander like this. Of course, you can also utilize a card like High Tide that is a very cheap instant for just a blue that says until end of turn whenever a player taps an island for mana, that player adds blue to their mana pool. So now with this, obviously, for just one mana, you're doubling up the effectiveness of all of your islands, and you can definitely net a ton of mana. And again, keep in mind, this is an instant, so you can exile it with a kick counter on it with Chun-Li. Also, some other kinds of cards to consider, again, because you are going to be casting a ton of instants throughout the game, and you have to actually pay for their cost even when they have a kick counter on them, Definitely consider cards like Cloud Key, Jace's Sanctum, and maybe even Arcane Melee. Cloud Key is an artifact for three, and when it enters the battlefield, you choose artifact, creature, enchantment, instant, or sorcery. And obviously, with this kind of a deck, you're going to choose instant. Go figure. It says spells you cast the chosen type cost one less to cast. So now for a card like Snap, which again would cost one in a blue, it just costs a blue. And even without any other, you know, lands that tap for multiple mana or mana doublers, you are actually netting mana just by casting that card. So obviously that can be huge in helping you cast more and more spells, of course, and with reduced mana, you can just cast a ton of spells in a turn. Jace Sanctum is, of course, another card that can really help out. It says, instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, scry one. So this not only helps you reduce the cost of your instants, and, or, and your sorceries too, which is nice, but also whenever you cast one, you scry one. So you can get a ton of card selection out of this when you cast more and more instants throughout the game. And of course, a somewhat risky, but probably worth it card in this deck is Arcane Melee. It's an enchantment that says, instant sorcery spells cost two less to cast. So two less to cast is a ton, and this can save you an absurd amount of mana throughout the game. Just again, keep in mind that this also applies to your opponent's spells as well, but yeah, for a deck like this with the number of instants that you're going to be casting, it's probably going to be worth it. And yeah, reducing the cost of your instants can definitely lead to some massive plays. For example, of course, one of the first cards that came to my mind when I saw this commander was Dramatic Reversal. It's an instant that costs one in a blue, and it says untap all non-lane permanents you control. So obviously this untaps, you know, creatures that you're going to be attacking with, like your commander, which is nice, but more importantly, it's untapping, you know, other non-land permanents, like, you know, your mana rocks. So this can, of course, give you access to a ton of mana in a turn. Again, the more mana rocks you have in play, the more mana that you're generating, and yeah, just cast this, untap all of them, and net a ton of mana. And again, if this has a kick counter on it, because it's an instant, you can just keep doing this on every single one of your attacks. Speaking of which, there's Intellectual Offering, which is an instant for four and a blue, so yeah, this one can definitely benefit from a lot of cost reduction, and it says choose an opponent, you and that player each draw three cards. And choose an opponent, untap all non-lane permanents you control and all non-lane permanents that player controls. So yeah, this one not only can untap all of your non-lane permanents, but also draw you three cards. Now it does benefit opponents too, but believe me, if you're set up properly, you're going to get the most value out of this. And speaking of value, obviously there's also Turnabout, which can be utilized in a couple of different ways of this kind of a deck. It's an instant that says, tap or untap all artifacts, creatures, and or lands target player controls. So first up, if you really need to utilize this to actually get Chun-Li through, you can. I mean, you can tap down another player's creatures to make sure that Chun-Li gets through during combat. But a more impactful way to utilize it is obviously to use this to untap all of your artifacts or lands. Again, if you've got a ton of mana rocks in play, go for that, but more likely you're probably going to untap your lands, especially, you know, if you're also casting things like High Tide to make your islands tap for more, or again, you've got those lands that tap for multiple mana already. Yeah, this can be an incredibly impactful spell. Again, by getting kick counters on these spells and getting access to them over and over again, you can generate an absurd amount of mana in a turn and help you cast even more spells, you know, that have kick counters on them. But one card that Eddie pointed out, which 
well, is incredibly absurd with Chun-Li is Teferi's protection. If you're set up correctly and you get a kick counter on this, it can be really hard to stop you. Teferi's protection is an instant 4-2 in a white that says, until your next turn, your life total can't change and you have protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out, which means that while they're phased out, they're treated as though they don't exist, they phase in before you untap during your untap step. And exile Teferi's protection, but again, that doesn't matter if you already have exiled it and it's got a kick counter on it, because you're just copying it from exile, so yeah. Yeah, being able to cast this every single turn is pretty absurd. You basically just leave and then come back on your next turn and nothing happened to you. Your opponents can't deal with your commander or anything on your board, and yes, ag again, this can probably get pretty annoying if you don't have ways to win while being set up in this way, so please have ways to win if you are setting up in this way. Now, obviously, it's not unstoppable. They can still try to deal with, you know, Chun-Li or what you're doing on your turn, but yeah, once you're set up, it's going to be really hard because you're going to have access to this card in perpetuity, again, since has a kick counter on it. And obviously, in these colors, you've got access to plenty of control spells, I mean, and also counter spells, obviously, to protect what you're doing. And, and yeah, this can be a very potent combination with Chun-Li. Now, the first card that actually came to my mind was Nexus of Fate, and Eddie pointed out that luckily this card does not work in combination with Chun-Li, although there is a way around it that does make it work, we'll, we'll talk about it here in a second. Nexus of Fate, I believe, is the only instant speed extra turn spell, but please correct me below in the comments if I'm wrong on that, or at least the only one in these colors. Anyway, it's an instant for five blue blue, and it says take an extra turn after this one. So yeah, I mean, if this just read that and nothing else, y if you just, you know, got a kick counter on this in exile and you had enough mana, you could just have infinite extra turns and your opponents probably couldn't do anything to stop you. Now, luckily, it does say if Nexus of Fate would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Nexus of Fate and shuffle into its owner's library instead. So, yeah, it's not going to work with Chun-Li. Unless you go through an incredibly convoluted way of manifesting it with something like a Scroll of Fate. Scroll of Fate is an artifact for three that has tap manifest a card from your hand. So basically, you put on the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature, and you can turn up for its mana cost if it's a creature card, but you're not going to do that in this scenario. Basically, you manifest Nexus of Fate, and yeah, now it's a 2-2 creature. Cool. You get it to go into combat, and you get it to die in combat. And again, magic has weird rules, and somehow, technically, that gets around, you know, the whole if it's going to put in your graveyard from anywhere because it was a manifested card, it was just a 2 2 that didn't have anything on it, it can go in your graveyard in that case, and it's not going to be shuffled. So, if you want to go through this incredibly convoluted process again of manifesting Nexus of Fate, go for it, because then you can get it into your graveyard and then multi kick Chun Li to get it, you know, with a kick counter on in exile, and then you can just cast it again and again and again, and you win with extra turns. Yay! Yeah, th that's a lot of setup for this. Regardless, outside of cards like Nexus of Fate that shuffle into your library when they hit your graveyard, of course, plenty of ways to actually get other instants into your graveyard that don't do that are cards like, you know, Frantic Surge, Factor Fiction, or Traumatize. Frantic Surge is, of course, an incredible one in this deck. It's an instant for two and a blue, and it says draw two cards, then discard two cards, untap up to three lands. So obviously this one helps you with looting, you know, getting you two cards and helping you ditch two cards that you actually want into your graveyard. And on top of that, again, it's basically a free spell helping you untap up to three lands. And again, when I say free, it might even actually net you mana. Obviously, if you've got some mana reducers out there, like, you know, a cloud key or arcane melee, and then obviously if you've got lands that tap for more than one mana, you are going to be netting a lot of mana with this. Factor Fiction is of course a fantastic one that can really be a hard decision for your opponents with this kind of a build. It says reveal the top five cards of your library and opponent separates those cards into two piles, put one pile into your hand, the other into your graveyard. Good luck to your opponent trying to decide what those piles should be because yeah, I mean, they can either give you some good instance for your hand or some good instance that you're going to put into your graveyard and it's going to be a tough split for them. And of course, you can utilize a fantastic non-instant speed card with Traumatize. It's a sorcery for a three blue blue, and it says target player puts the top half of their library rounded down into their graveyard. Basically, mill half your library. So yeah, that can get a ton of instants into your graveyard that you then can get access to with Chun-Li. I mean, of course, you can also go into a more specific approach with some instants that actually tutor with cards like Mystical Tutor, Enlightened Tutor, and of course, Intuition. Mystical Tutor says search your library for an instant or sorcery card and reveal that card, shuffle your library, then put that card on top of it. So yeah, if you want to go get that dramatic reversal or whatnot, go get it, get it on top of your library, maybe draw into it, then cast it, and now it's in your graveyard. Or again, maybe you want to go get that traumatized to actually just get a ton of cards into your graveyard. This can obviously help in a lot of scenarios. And then Enlightened Tutor basically does the exact same thing, but for a white, and it's going to go get any artifact or enchantment. So yeah, if you actually want to go for that, you know, Scroll of Fate manifest uh, Nexus of Fate thing, 
Go for it. And actually, I just realized that Scroll of Fate, uh, you know, ends with the exact same words as Nexus of Fate. So, cool. I mean, Scroll of Nexus of Fate. Yes, that is definitely what that build's going to be called. Not at all. But more likely, you can utilize this to go maybe go get one of those cost reducers, you know, like that Arcane Melee or that Cloud Key. And yeah, again, since these are each instance, they can really come in handy, you know, when you actually just get kick counters on them and can cast them for just one mana with your commander to set up your next draw every time. But one of the best cards for Chun-Li has got to be Intuition, which I will point out, I believe is on the reserve list and is like $175 or something. So yeah, this card is incredibly expensive and might get even more expensive because of this commander. It's an instant for two in the blue and its Oracle text reads, search your library for three cards and reveal them. Target opponent chooses one. Put that card in your hand and the rest in your graveyard, then shuffle. Yeah, this card is absolutely incredible with Chun-Li. Again, it's an instant, so, well, you can get a kick counter on it in exile and cast it again and again and again. You can, you know, tutor up three incredible cards that your opponent is going to have a very tough decision to see what's actually going into your hand and what's going into your graveyard. And again, going into your graveyard is actually a good thing with this deck, for instance. So go get three fantastic instants and make your opponent sweat when they try to make a decision. Yeah, have fun with that. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Chun-Li Countless Kicks. Just overall a very interesting, unique, and flavorful commander. I mean, Chun-Li having multi-kicker is fantastic, and the way that they utilized it is in a very cool way. I am very glad that Chun-Li is very specific about them being instants and not just, you know, instant and or sorceries, because again, then the build would literally just be, hey, get, you know, X, you know, extra turn spell sorcery card in your graveyard, and then you win. But instead, if you actually want to, you know, extra turns win with this commander, which you can, I guess, you need to, you know, go through this convoluted process of actually, you know, manifesting out Nexus of Fate, getting Nexus of Fate in your graveyard from there, and then, you know, winning in that way. If you really want to do that, go for it. I mean, after you ask your, your friends if that's okay. But yeah, just overall, a very interesting, unique commander that I can see a lot of players being excited to build around it, especially Street Fighter fans. And of course, I just want to mention this one more time. Disclaimer, this card has not been officially confirmed to be the actual card. So yeah, keep that in mind, though. Again, I am 99.99999% sure that this is probably the card. And of course, on top of that, again, do not feel pressured to actually buy the secret layer if you are very excited about this card. You can either, you know, wait for the magic version of it, or again, I can see players who want to build around this right away, not wanting to actually wait for it to come out, even just, you know, proxy it if they really want to and their playgroup's okay with it. But yeah, I'm going to try my best today with this, let's just call it again, a mini spoiler season to break down the commanders as best as I can. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode and make sure you're staying tuned for other episodes that are, well, okay, after I get another cup of coffee or, or two, hopefully coming out in the near future. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.